Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. Welcome back here to another update on this beautiful, fine Friday night. It is Friday. Hopefully, everyone's having a great night out there. It is the Earth Master here in Northern California, where it's currently raining. 11.32 p.m. here, California time. Uh, latest activity on the Earthquake 3D Globe. Let's go ahead and check it out here. Looks like a 3.1 down into the New Zealand area. About, uh, well, it looks like just off the north coast here, North Island. We'll go ahead and check that out here in a little bit. The latest informational statement here. Um, from the Iceland area, looks like about 402 earthquakes here in the last 24 hours, last six hours or so. Looking at about 95 earthquakes still confined to the area around the magma intrusion region. It is in a linear fashion here north and northeast here of the Grindavik area of Iceland. Still kind of watching that, folks. Uh, the latest informational statement here from the Iceland Met Office here, the Meteorological Office, Met. Uh, looks like they're still forecasting potentially uh, a significant likelihood of an eruption in the coming days. But could they be wrong? Good possibility, right? Very good possibility. We have seen some... Uh, well, we have seen some inflation activity out here in the years past with no eruption, so it's very possible these may have been, uh, this may kind of stir up and we may not see any magma uh, making its way to the surface, but uh, I still, I am still kind of leaning towards the possibility of an eruption here. More than likely, it's going to be towards the northeast here of the Grindavik area of Iceland within this region of the magma uh, intrusion area around these crater areas up here. So, of course, we'll continue to watch that and check back on it. All right, let's go ahead and jump in to the latest activity here across the USGS map. Got a little bit of movement stirring up here in the last hour around the Dominican Republic area. 4.0 coming in uh, within that last hour, about 94 kilometers deep. Uh, very minimal movement here across the area of the Puerto Rico region. I think we're looking at all magnitudes, right? Yes, we are. Uh, it looks a little spotty down here. Not a whole lot of activity stirring up here. Uh, some movement down in Ecuador here. 4.5 within the last hour as well. So it looks like mainly a little bit of stirring up here across this little tiny plate boundary. That's a Caribbean plate here. Getting squeezed and pushed around and bullied by two major plates out here. The South American region and also the North American plate. And you can't forget about the movement here from the west headed towards the east area lot of uh, momentum and pressure going on out here across this area of the Caribbean plate. Uh, down in or up here in Northern California, got a 2.4 within the last 30 minutes or so. 17 kilometers deep. That is associated with the Cascadia subduction zone. So let's go ahead and check it out right here real quick, see what's going on. Uh, we do have 66 epicenters of trimmer along the Cascadia. Nothing big, but that is... Um, it's a little bit. Def definitely not anything on the elevated side. Uh, the rest of California, very spotty at best. Not seeing anything major going on. Uh, and that includes the rest of the states up there. Uh, let's look at Hawaii before we skip this. It's kind of out there in the middle, right? I tend to, I tend to follow the plate boundary out here. And uh, I, I forget about these guys. Uh, major population density out here on the hot spot, right in the middle of the Pacific Plate. Uh, 2.4, Pahala area. Far as the tilt meters go, this is very... We got to follow the tilt meters and see um, what's going on out there in terms of the, the volcanic activity across the Kilauea volcano. This gives us a good indicator of whether we're seeing further magma intrusion or if we are looking at a uh, significant... Um, a decline in the activity out here across the uh, uh, Kilauea volcano. Let me see here. Hopefully we can get this to key up. UWE. Um, kind of over the past two days here, we're coming back down from a major inflation event there across Kilauea and leveling out right now. And that is evident on the past two days. Also evident here on the past 30 days. This is the past... Um, week or so of elevated trim or um, inflation activity across the summit area of Kilauea volcano that's uh pretty significant there compared to our past events 
Uh, but we have leveled out here in the past two days. Now, we're going to look at a period here, probably tomorrow or maybe the next day, of a couple different scenarios. This is either going to take a nosedive and go below this previous activity, or uh, we may follow the similar trends as what we've seen here in the past 30 days, where we've seen elevated inflation, followed by deflation, and a period of a relative uh, neutral activity followed up by inflation events. So if this goes up here, um, then obviously we're looking at you know a good possibility of an eruptive activity, eruption there across the Kilauea volcano. But right now it's kind of neutral, so it's very important to watch this overnight and tomorrow. Uh, see if this takes a nosedive here, or if this is going to continue here neutral and possibly go back up. We'll We'll definitely watch that all right uh so um, you know but earthquake activity that's definitely one to watch right past 24 hours past, well here's the past 12 hours not a whole lot of earthquake activity out there for now all right let's go ahead and move on just going to kind of make this a little short update here uh, there's that 6.7 in the philippines way early this morning in fact that's just about ready to drop off the 24 hour map here coming up on uh, just about 24 hours old some movement around Papua New Guinea uh, a real quick glance here at GeoNet servers let's go ahead and check these guys out here real quick and see what's going on here uh, 2.3 20, 29 minutes ago that but that's about it There's we're not really seeing anything major kicking up here across this area of New Zealand, similar to California, right along this plate boundary. It's just occasionally we get earthquakes, occasionally we don't. We're told that we're looking at some major earthquake activity here in the future, but who knows when it's going to be, who knows when it's going to happen. Similar to California, you know, I've been hearing this for, I don't know, I, want, I don't want to give away my age, but I've been hearing this since I was a kid. It's been many, many years since uh, I heard that. We still haven't seen the big one out here, but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It just means that we're living in some times right now of quiet seismicity. But it's not going to stay that way forever. That I can promise you. Uh, the rest of the map out here. Uh, some uh, movement around the area, around the west of the Himalayas, it looks like, northwest out here. Uh, of that region looks like a 4.4 somewhat deep out there Atlantic Ocean pretty quiet folks not a whole lot going on across the Atlantic for now um, just a little it, it's a little quiet out here if you really think about it uh, in terms of uh, movement right now since about the uh, since a 6.7 struck earlier uh, so we'll continue to watch it overnight we did see a little peak of an M flare earlier this evening notice that little M flare coming in here coming up out of the blue well where did it come from it looks as though <coughs> well, I, i'm guessing it probably came from one of these far side sunspots here let's go ahead and check out the uh movie here from the uh, sdo site this will give us a good indicator where that M flare came from i just want to see what's going on here Real quick, uh, let's put this into motion. 14 seconds of your time. Watch out here, I believe. Look at this one, man. Look at that little feature. That's beautiful. Uh, but I think that M flare is going to kick up here across the uh, west, eastern limb of the sun. Uh, where is it? Hold on a second here. Let's see. Bring this back a little bit. I, I didn't see that. Not 100% certain where that where that's coming from. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it looks like maybe a far side eruption over here. Uh, potentially. Uh, goodness. But uh, kind of hard to say. At least according to that movie, uh, these guys mentioning it, mentioning it anywhere on their update doesn't look like it. But uh, apparently we did see a really quick flash of an M flare. And I'm guessing it's from 3489 here. That's the newest regional sunspot. Welcome to the Earth-facing side of the uh, sun. 
Now, whether this is going to turn into something majorly active or not, well, I, I don't know. That, that kind of remains to be seen. Right now, 90% chance at best for a C flare, M flare at 20% chance, and the rest around that 1% or less. Uh, we'll definitely have to watch that. Again, that's going to be 34.89. It does harbor some potential. Looks like, at least according to the magnetogram image out here, of some uh, complex complexity within that magnetic structure of uh, harboring some flare activity. But it doesn't look like that's the main story right now. Apparently, on November 19th, November 20th time period, we're looking at a G2 class storm. Could this be true? Well, November 19th, UTC time around 18 to 2400. Right now, the current time here is going to be uh, November 18th, 0743 UTC time. So we're looking at technically, um, oh, what's this going to be? Uh, on Sunday, potentially. Sunday into Monday, I'm guessing, it looks like, because... Um, we're currently in this period right here. Um, yeah, potentially into the, um, Sunday time period, but we'll check back on, we'll definitely check back on that tomorrow sometime. Now, whether, you know, that G2 class storm comes to, uh, prevail or not, we'll, we'll definitely watch that. Let's go ahead and check out the latest solar wind prediction here. Um, from the Space Weather Prediction Center and see what's going on. There's a little bit of a shout out um, from that, from the sun here. Not a huge event, but it looks as though the plasma density here is quite elevated on this chart. Notice that the plasma density hitting the green circle here, that's Earth, with a pretty square dead on hit. Now this is not going to be a fast event far as velocity goes, but it does look like it's dense in terms of the proton and the plasma density, the energy that's associated uh, with the CME. It is definitely directed at earth and uh, we'll, we'll have to watch that. Whether that materializes into a G, uh, G2 class storm or not, uh, we'll have to cover that. We'll definitely cover that back uh, here tomorrow sometime. All right, uh, weather activity here real quick. Um, we did have a little bit of rain here in my neck of the woods. Um, that is going to continue overnight as a low-pressure system spins off and uh, continues in the California area tonight and tomorrow, bringing with it maybe uh, some chances of thunderstorms. But after that, we got a dry week ahead. And uh, I'm hoping that changes. I, I'm hoping that dry spell does not last long because uh, that is not cool. I'm not a big dry weather fan. I'm not your fair weather type of guy. I know that turns a lot of people off. A lot of people like the sunshine, right? Sunshine, 80 degrees, no wind. Well, to me, that's a little on the boring side. Excuse me. Uh, let's look at the r radar satellite, uh, out here for right now with a radar. Definitely seeing some rainfall out here around the Chico area of Northern California. This is expected to, uh, continue overnight as the low pressure system builds. Well, it doesn't build, but it continues to go inland here in the Northern California, bringing with it some substantial moisture. Now, there is uh, a chance of some thunderstorm activity. The Cape value is not quite high overnight, but it looks like uh, I think we've seen some tomorrow building up in Southern California, maybe a little bit outside of Redding here. This is the Cape values uh, in terms of the potential energy there for uplift and thunderstorm activity, but uh, we'll just kind of see how that plays out. The Storm Prediction Center here is calling for um, this is tonight. Let's see what we got here. Looks like mainly overnight here, potentially we could see that uh, thunderstorm activity build out here across the West Coast. Nothing big. I, I, every time they put a chance out here for thunderstorm activity, it never 
materializes because we just don't have the dynamics out here in terms of uh, the energy, the moisture, the uplift that uh, that gives those thunderstorms the uh, the life you know the life that uh, they thrive for. <laughs> All right, folks. Um, let's see what else is there. It's it's a guessing game with Iceland. A lot of people asking me what's going on. Why is it quieting down? Why is the area uh, showing signs of subsidence? Well, magma moves around this area in the rift zone, and it uh, it it looks for obviously the weakest point, so to speak, in terms of the crust and right now they believe uh the the area that may see the highest possibility of the eruption is going to be this area north of the grindavik area within this zone right about here um so that's a possibility the other possibility here is kind of leaning more towards this possibility you know, and i said at first that um, you know, the likelihood of this may be minimal, but it looks as though potentially this may just die off and that's it. We may not see an eruption at all. Um, but right now these folks tend to agree here that the high likelihood of a volcanic eruption continues. Um, That shows 1115, but this was updated 1117 here earlier today. Uh, they still think it's going to happen. Um, the highest likelihood, again, starting north of the Grindavik area near Hagafell region of Iceland. All right, folks, I'm, I'm going to jump off here. I'm a little bit tired. Just coming up on midnight right now, so uh, at least my time. We'll catch you guys back out here sometime tomorrow uh, for the weekend. Take care and uh, have yourself a great, safe night.